Hey Kentucky, this is Mary Jo Perino. Tonight, Matt Bevan and Andy Bashir participate in their final debate. We'll talk to Kentucky's candidates for Secretary of State. And can Emmanuel quickly overcome a sophomore curse for UK basketball? All that and more is next on Hey Kentucky. Welcome to Hey Kentucky, presented by Wendy's. Ryan Lemon, the national treasure that he is, <laughs> is my co-host tonight. You can tell I'm dressed up a little early for Halloween tonight. Yeah, as a... Alan Cutler! Oh, yes, yes. Hey, can't you tell? <laughs> yeah. I look just like Alan you, Cutler. You do. Although you'd have to lose like 70 pounds because, you know, he only eats like seeds and leafy greens that's, now. That's very true. Yeah. 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 All right. Governor Bevan and Andy Bashir have clashed for the last time in a debate ahead of next week's election. NKU hosted the candidates last night. They discussed their stances on abortion, the opioid crisis, even whether flavored e-cigarettes should be banned. Of course, many teachers and state employees are concerned about the future of their pensions, which has been a hot topic for this race. I'm the only one on the stage who understands this because I'm the only one that's ever worked in this industry. The reason I have funded it, the reason I ran to be governor, was to take this among other cans that were being kicked down the road and to stop kicking them. Because I'm here by choice. I love this state. My wife and our nine children are growing up in this state. And if a state falls into financial insolvency, everything else we would wish for becomes a moot point. But let's be really clear. Matt Bevan hasn't denied that he is raising your taxes to pay for this pension system. I'm for new dedicated revenue, beginning with the expanded gaming. Later in the debate, the candidates were asked to say something nice about each other. Bevan said congratulations to Andy Bashir on running for governor. Bashir tried to compliment the governor's work to the foster care system, but Bevan accused him of lying during that answer. Ryan, I don't know that these debates matter at all for voters. All that we know is they do not like each other at all. I think it would have been more interesting if they put on boxing gloves and just let them go at it. Because, yeah, they do not like each other. It became a little entertaining just be because of that fact. Yeah. I don't care really what they were saying, but there's the fact that they were just barb after barb after barb against each other. That's what made I it entertaining. Know. Liar, you liar, lie, lie, lie. That's that's really what it was. Yeah. So if voters can't really take anything from that because you you don't know who is lying, really. And it's been that way from day one. That's what I think has drawn a lot of people into this race, just to the fact that the two candidates do not like each other. Right, but I don't know how many people are going to get out and vote because looking ahead to next Tuesday, Kentucky's Secretary of State has issued her prediction for voter turnout. Allison Lundergan Grimes says she is expecting about 1 million people or 31% of the state's 3.5 million registered voters to show up at the polls. Grimes and her office based the prediction on absentee ballot totals. Officials say if the prediction proves correct, the voter total would slightly edge out 2015's general election when 30.7% of registered voters turned out. And Ryan, what that means at the end of the day is 16% of the people that li that are registered in the state are going to decide the governor. I know, it's crazy. It's sad. But we know this is nothing new. We see this all the time. I thought maybe, like we just talked about, the fact that these two guys hate each other so much might get enough interest more people might go. All the teachers, I thought, would go. Yeah. All the people worried about their pension might go just because of this governor's race. Well, let's hope they're wrong. I, ho I hope if we could see somewhere of 35 to 40 percent, that'd be, It'd be great. It'd be incredible. All right, turning to sports, the UK football coaching staff is weighing in on yesterday's news from the NCAA about allowing college athletes to earn money for their name, image, and likeness. Everyone has questions about how this would work, especially for football players. Because, you know, like star offensive linemen don't get the face time that other guys do, so would they get less money? How are we going to pay them? The questions are endless, meaning don't expect it to be figured out anytime soon. Here's what Kentucky assistant Vince Miro and head coach Mark Stoops had to say. I don't know, man. Being a former athlete and being now a coach, uh, I'm always, you know, wanting the kids to get as much as they can get, but I I'm just trying to wonder how they're going to govern that. I think it's progress. You know, I, I you know, there, there's just so much to work out. Again, that, that I don't have time to even put my arms around it, but it uh, seems like there would definitely be some, some questions I would have, you know, as to, uh, I know the people I'm dealing with, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so the NCAA doesn't have a great track record of making sound decisions. I do think they got on board really quickly on this as they needed to, and then they said it'll happen in 2021. Like, we'll figure it out later. But, yes, we're going to figure something out. Yeah, their hands were tied, I think. They yeah. had to go ahead and make this decision. The question that everybody talks about are the video games. And from what I understand, they have to make individual contracts with, like, everybody. I mean, there's 
a hundred dudes on a football team that could potentially be on this video game. So I think that's why it's really going to drag out, really take a lot of time. Like Coach Stoops said, it's going to take a lot of time to figure all this out. But that's what people want. I know they the want video college games. college football back. I know on it. Your, on your PlayStations and, and your Xboxes. Yes, I know we're all excited about that. All right, to Kentucky basketball. Emmanuel quickly is looking to make the, dis the most of his decision to return for a sophomore year. Coach Cal has been talking up the former five-star recruit since the offseason and his performance on the court so far has backed it up, but quickly is working against a troubling trend for returning UK role players in the Calipari era. Over the last decade, 14 Wildcats who did not start a postseason game as freshmen have returned to school for a sophomore season, but the only guy to get drafted eventually was Tyler Eulis. Now, Ryan, that's, I mean, I, <laughs> I also think that there's, you know, guys like P.J. Washington who came back, and yes, he did start a postseason game, but that have made the most of their sophomore year. Yeah. Keep in mind, Tyler, uh, uh, Emmanuel quickly would have started on probably every other yes, team yes. in the country last year but Kentucky. The guy, all the buzz has been about him. He's a workhorse. He's the first guy in the gym, works his butt off, last guy to leave in the gym, and they're going to play three guards a lot this year mm -hmm. with Hagens and Maxie and Quickly. You saw what he's done so far this season. I think he's going to carry that throughout the year. Forget about the fact that, you know, maybe Maxie may be our leading scorer and Hagens is probably the captain and maybe the leader of the team. Quickly may be the guy that may be the whole key to the success of how this team does this year. He may be the most consistent scorer. That's the word, yeah. You know, where, he, where you can count on him for 15 points a night, which would be... Great. Yeah. All right. Now, if you're a fan of UK basketball, you do not want to miss our special edition of Hey Kentucky tomorrow night. Tune in at 730 for UK basketball generations. Former Cats, Jack Goose Givens, Kenny Skywalker, and Twani Beckham share their stories from different eras of playing in Kentucky Blue.